All right, so you have to be the only person I've ever met. You haven't exercised in 15 years? 15 years. I'm active, but no, like, official exercising. All right, so the, the number one exercise in the world, hands down, is the burpee. Do you know what right. the burpee is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just learned that this week. So Developed by Royal H. Burpee, 1940s, to test military recruits. You ready? Here we are in the evening in the Amy Farm Barn, uh, and it's uh, the SpartanUpPodcast.com. We've got Colonel Tim Nye on the far side here. Beside him, we have our wild woman, Sephra, who leads a rewilding enterprise here in Pittsfield, Vermont. We've got Joe, founder of Spartan Race. Doesn't need much more introduction than that. And I'm Johnny Waite. And uh, we've been interviewing some incredible people with the unfortunate flagging help <laughs> of Marion Abrams. <laughs> Marion is our camera person who really is not just the fifth person on the show, but I would say the heart and soul of the show, and I really do Absolutely. mean that. She keeps us moving. She keeps us on track. She, and, lives, uh, she lives in the basement here in the barn. Every week you'll <laughs> see us here in the barn, and you probably wonder how we... Um, I come down we, from the woods. She comes <laughs> down from the woods. Um, Johnny... They um, bring me in from Canada. <laughs> he, well, you, you parachuted in on this one. Colonel Absolutely. Mike comes in on his chopper, which Colonel I wish Mike I had. came in on the chopper, and, and uh, I rode in on a motorcycle, so That's we're here. <laughs> Really. <laughs> but this is not about us as much as sometimes we like to think it is. It's really about our guests. And uh, our guest West for this Chapman. one, Wes Chapman, uh, has an enterprise called The Human Project. Yep. Joe, you interviewed him here mm -hmm. in Pittsfield, I in believe? In Pittsfield, yeah. Cool. So um, what, what's he do? What, what's this all about? We're going to find out. You've actually talked to him. So tell yeah, us. Yeah, he just he wants to help people. He's, he's one of the people, uh, just like other guests we've had, that are much bigger than themselves and uh, not just focused on what they're doing or how they're going to get ahead. But... Um, he really wants to reach out to communities and, and young people and really help change their lives. All right, we're rolling. We are here at the Spartan Up podcast in the um, pool house with Wes. Wes, you have three uh, number one podcasts? I uh, have. Yeah, well, right now we have the Human Podcast, which is our latest one. And uh, yeah, we hit number one. We're building it up, building up the audience, so it's cool. So. What's the Human Podcast? The Human Podcast, we talk all about human issues and how things we do as adults, how they're affecting youth. You know, everything from, we've talked about sex, we've talked about gay and Christian, we've talked about bikinis, we talk about everything, nothing's off limits. And then we, how do the youth perceive adult actions, you know, so. So give me an example of that. So like adult actions would be, um, I eat junk food in front of my kids and so they eat junk food? Exactly. Or? And then at the same time, we're telling our youth, you know, that they're lazy and they're entitled and they're not doing things and they don't eat right. And then it's like mom and dad are sitting there, you know, mom's dumping a box of food off, you know, off the, out of the cupboard and making dinner, right? And that's considered making dinner and you want our kids to eat healthy. And then adults are complaining to the public schools that they don't have good food and the kids are sitting there going, but mom and dad are doing this, you know? So... Anyway, we talk about that, but I mean, everything, like hatred, like we, we had a great episode about like Christians and gays and like the hate that they have for each other. And it's not about that. You know, it's about you have your beliefs, you have your beliefs and how do you, you know, commingle and how do you talk about things? But how do the youth perceive that? And then how do the, you know, a youth who has no, pre, you know, they don't care, right? Right. As a kid, you're like, I don't care. I don't see racism. I don't see these things. So where do they get it from? You know? And so we just talk about those topics and those issues. So. It's fun. Yeah, you know, we did a, uh, did a death race. Uh, every year I put a death race on here in uh, Pittsfield and uh, did a death race one year where I was trying to teach people that it doesn't matter what religion you believe in, right? Just be a good person. Exactly. So we started the race in the church and we ended it in the church. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, my mother used to be a big, um, she, she pushed that, like, you just got to just be good. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you believe in. How do you... I'm sorry I'm going off on this religious tangent. But, That's fine. Um, I love to solve problems. How would we uh, get everybody to think that way? By example, I think that's our first step, right? Is that we can talk a lot and you come out here, you do things and obviously you're by example, but it's all about what are we doing? What are we leading? Are we taking, and it's always taking that first step is always the hardest and it's who's gonna stand up and say that, right? I mean, you've gotta get somebody who has some kind of clout, some kind of power that's making those first steps. So whether it's athletes, whether it's religious individuals, whether it's presidents, whether it's entrepreneurs. People will listen to you. Mean. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, then everybody else has to take that action. So 
there's just a lot of talking going on. I mean, this is my personal frustration. There's a ton of talking going on on every topic, religion, food, exercise, emotional wellness, whatever. There's very few actions going on. And I think that's where we've got to stop talking and start acting. So, I mean, I end every one of our podcasts with, this is Wes Chapman, take action. You know, so it's right. whatever we talk about is great, but we got to take the action. So if we want to get everyone to be good, you know, be good and just stop worrying about what religion it is, all the religions have to come together on that, which is a, it's a daunting task, right? Because they all have their own agendas. So I think it's just going to take a, a group of people who just lead that charge and show that it can be done. Yeah. It's tough, right, when you're fighting the whole world on an issue. Yeah, but that's I what mean, makes it fun. That's what makes it fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting old, though. <laughs> well, you just hand the baton off, man. Yeah. That's what racing is all about, right? So you yeah. gotta you got to do your part as much as you can. I mean, that's... that's I mean, I'm still young to some degree, but I feel old, you know, comparatively when I'm working with 12, 13, 14 year olds, but figuring out how to hand that baton off to them in a way that they can own it. That, that it's not me saying, do, 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 but it's me saying, well, isn't this kind of cool? Like, you like this? And then it's like, oh, I love this. This is so, it's my idea. This is cool. And then they run with it. And you just kind of step back and say, that's right, you know? And it, it takes a certain kind of person to do that, right? It's like, you can't. You, you've got to be cocky enough that you think you can change the world. You've got to be crazy enough that you know you can change the world. And then you've got to be stupid enough that you actually try to do it, right? Like, you've got to have all of that mixed in. But then you've got to be confident enough to step back and say, hey, it can be me. Like, if you wanted to say that I did it, great. But really, you, you did it, you know? So it's just, it's an interesting mix, so. That's what I kind of do with Marion, who's holding the camera. I tell her <laughs> thing, I'm completely confident. She wants to ask the questions, it's fine, I don't. Yeah. She asks questions a lot of time. Do you have that problem with your podcast, where your crew is jumping in, wanting to be the talent? Yeah, and we actually love that. Actually, when we sat down, my co-host and I, we said, okay, what's our ultimate goal of this? Like, what do we want to do besides just ranting and talking about stuff? And we said, we want people to talk back to us. And it's really fun. I'll go into different places and people are like, oh, it's your podcast. And I'll just drop my phone down, hit play, and I'll leave the room and intentionally. And I'll come back about five minutes later and people are like talking to each other and yelling at the phone. And I'm like, yeah, that worked, you know? So yeah. even when we're having editing, we have people do our show notes and editing everything. And we'll get emails or texts like, oh, minute 23, you guys were crazy. Like, how could you say that? And it's like, well, got you thinking. And that's right. the whole point, right? Yeah, right. Get people thinking. So um, explain the human project. So a human project was started a few months ago. Um, I don't even know how many days ago. May 1st is when we officially launched. And in that time, we're now in three countries. And it's the whole concept of taking youth that are in negative situations. They're still in them. You know, my aha moment happened at a school where uh, I spoke at a lot of prisons and boys' homes and foster youth and things like that. And I was in there, and I was talking to them about, look, your life sucks. We get that. And, and I'm paraphrasing. It's hard, but now it's your turn to kind of take over and you're out of that situation. Look at all these people who love you. Stop being a victim. And then I got into these public schools and I started speaking and these kids would come up to me and they would tell me their stories. The bell would ring and they're like, I'm going home. I'm like, where, you know, where's home? Well, all those things I just told you, you know, being molested, being beaten, split parents, alcoholic father, whatever. That's where I'm going. And it was kind of this aha moment where I'm like, wait a minute, like all the foster stuff's great. But there's kids that are still stuck in these situations, and how are we going to reach them? How are we going to, before they're in the prisons and they're in the systems, how do we reach them? So that's, that's where a human project was birthed, is how do we create this like secret mission, the secret messaging that we can get to youth so they feel comfortable, they can join a program, join a community, where they can learn how to empower themselves, and in the end, really shift their entire family dynamic. So one child comes into the program, maybe they've got two or three siblings and a mom and then dad who's taken off or vice versa. Mom's working two jobs, doing the best she can. How do we empower that youth to, really in a simplistic level, how do they become the parent you know, without and still maintaining a childlike you know, lifestyle? How do they do that and create this power for themselves that can change their family and then eventually change their community and so on and so forth. So it's been Our very kids, successful. Do kids have to think, I, I know um, there were these youth centers and stuff when I was growing up, and I would just think, ah, it's not cool, I'm not going. Yeah. Like, how do you deal with that? So we, that was one of the first things that we liked to exercise the same. I mean, I was in the youth centers, right? And the hospitals and everything else. So I wanted it to feel like it was theirs. I mean, we're very transparent with our youth. They know how many donors we have. They know what's going on. We have a, a weekly phone call where all the youth can come in, and it's almost like a business meeting where it's like, hey, this is the things we're doing. What do you guys think? You know, and they have this buy-in and this participation, and we're constantly getting great ideas from them, and then we implement them, and we try it, and we see if it works. And nine times out of ten, if it's 
you know, if they all agreed on that kind of a call, and we talk about their lives issues, but they also feel like they're building this company. They feel like they're building this project, so they own it. And they're recruiting youth and they're bringing youth in. So it's not even me or staff members going out and telling the story. It's the youth saying, this is so cool. you got to come try this. It's really cool. And it's like, well, what is it? I don't know. It's just cool. It's fun. We have so much fun. We get along. They love us. We learn all these cool things. And, and we've got youth that are starting their own podcast channels now on YouTube. And like one youth actually wants to start a podcast on iTunes, just regurgitating our stuff. And these kids are 15, regurgitating the things we're teaching them, which is really nothing more than what I've been taught you know, my whole life and putting it in their kid-like words, right, and, and talking and just making it that way. So our way to make it cool was to let the kids kind of have the ownership. Like it's, it's, kinda, it's their thing. It's their project, you know, wh- whatever they want to do. And then we, that reinvents ourselves, you know, every couple of years because new youth are going to come in, and then those youth are still a part of it, the older youth, and they're mentoring the younger youth. So it's, we kind of created this stability thing. So, um, How do people find out about it? A humanproject.com. So a uh, humanproject.com. Hey, simple. letter A. The you know the logo and stuff works because um, you gave me some cards. Yeah. And a, and a shirt, and my daughter found them fascinating. Yeah. So yeah. she grabbed them and she was uh, keeping your business cards uh, this morning. <laughs> I had to pry them away from her. So there, there's that's something. Awesome. Something is attracted, uh, attracting yeah. a five-year-old. So that's good. Yeah. No, we spent. We spent two months, besides building the program and everything, my whole background is in brands. I've done about 5,000 brands, over 5,000 brands now. Wow. And uh, that was my career before this. Well, right? well let's take a break because I want to so. get, I, I, I was never a brand guy, but I've had to become one with yeah. Spartan Race, and so I want to ask you a bunch of questions. Yeah. As usual, our hired help, the camera people, have overturned my um, my plan, which was to go down this road of things I need, and, <laughs> and she would like to know how you empower the, the, the children and the human project. Yeah, so it's very simple. I mean, again, think like a child, be simple. It's all about what content we're giving them. I mean, all these big corporations, all these big companies, they've done billions of dollars in research and human development and minds and all that stuff. We're just playing the same game. Right, so we're taking instead of instead of feeding them negativity or manipulation or whatever, we're feeding them raw, real, organic content that's coming from a heart. So, we recruit people from all over the world who've lived through traumatic experiences and come out on the other side as amazing entrepreneurs, as amazing human beings, as amazing athletes, and then they are creating what was their secret? How do they do it? And these youth literally, virtually, get to interact with those people How? in a back end like, system. We have a we have a back end portal website, right. so it's a one to one. Got the it. youth goes in. There's no social aspect. We have a leaderboard. We have this whole point system. I mean, it, it, it's it's simplistically complex, but the messaging is all just about you can be your own self. This is how you do it. There's here's the steps, and it's from people that they can relate to, and it's just reinforcing that over and over again. And then the secret sauce, if you would, is getting the youth to go out and implement it. We talked about earlier, right? We can talk all we want, but they got to take action. So we we put together programs where the youth actually get you know, some reward, which there's nothing wrong with that. That's what we do as adults. We work for money, right? So we're teaching the youth do positive things to, f- to get some self-fulfillment, to get some self-worth, so they go out and start serving their community. They take all the stuff that they've learned from the coaching and all these programs, and then they have to go out and implement it. And they don't get points or rewards until the implementation stage. They don't just get rewarded for sitting there listening to somebody talking, but they get rewarded for actually going out and implementing those, those strategies. So they build self-confidence, self-worth, respect, and then they build the big one, which is the empowerment level, through confidence. So, I mean, we have children who have stood up to their alcoholic parents and said, I have, a, I have a safe home that I've identified in my community, and it's so-and-so's, and if you come home drunk, I don't care if it's 2 o'clock in the morning, I don't care if it's you know, 11 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm going over to that house, and I know how long it takes you to, you know, to get over your stuff, you're not going to beat me anymore. And it's very mature, it's very strong, it's very empowered, they go do that. And this one particular youth that I'm thinking about right now is that action created an entire family sitting down and saying, wait a minute, we got a problem, how do we fix this? And now the entire family is going through a process of fixing that. That's big, that's super rewarding. I mean, that had to make you feel incredible. Yeah, it makes me tear up, you know, all the time. Sustainable service, I think, is one of the big lessons that we teach the youth, is that we hear a lot about, like, pay it forward Friday or whatever, and which I love, I love that concept, but... A lot of the stuff that we're trying to teach our youth is like just human stuff, right? Like go help an old lady across the road or help somebody open the door for a woman who's got four bags of groceries. 
we don't need a reward for those kinds of things. What we need, what service is, is going out of your way to do something extraordinary that's going to be there when you're gone. So homeless person, right? We feed the homeless. That's great. It's admirable. I love it. That's just what we should do, right? That's just human behavior. That's how we should love our brothers, right? Or sisters. But what about going and building a lean-to? I don't know. I'm coming up with an idea. A lean-to for homeless to sleep under, right? And the youth actually build that and go through that experience and teaching them the difference between those two types of elements. It's a simple lesson, but then they understand it. And then it's like when they're going to do service, it's like, well, how can I do something that's going to be long-lasting, impactful for my family, my community, myself, whatever else? So it's one. How big is your team? Um, it's myself, my fiance, and Ryan, and then we have two interns. So small team. It's right a small now. team. It sounds yeah. like you've done done a ton already. Yeah, I don't sleep, so it's cool. It's good. Yeah, <laughs> sleeping, sleeping, you do when you're dead. Yeah, that's so, right. So, so now, um, is it okay if I ask a few questions? <laughs> All right. Um, brands. Let's talk about brands. Uh, Five thousand brands you've worked on. Yeah. Wow. So I've been doing this since I was eight years old. So I love it. And and so um, explain explain the brand, the power of a brand, or what what what. Let people understand a brand. So, I mean, it's, people ask me that a lot. What is, what is brand, right? Yep. And brand is everything. But brand is really the extension of your entire core of why you're doing it. So every element of everything you're doing, you need to be in tune with what your core is, what's your purpose, what's your, what's your overall direction, the action you want to take. And then you start building the brand from that. And it's literally everything. I mean, when, I, when I'm on stage, this is going to sound crazy and it's an awkward thing, but like I have green shoes. Our color is green, right? So I've got... Got our gear, my green shoes, green socks, green panties, green everything, right? It's like I'm going out there and I'm like, even things you don't see, like, is representing our color. And green is very important to us. It's, it's got some subliminal messaging. It's also something, a reason we picked green. But it's part of our brand. It's who we are. And then it also goes with customer service. It goes with how you handle things. It's how you handle problems. It's, I mean, there isn't one thing your brand doesn't encompass. And so many people think it's just the logo or it's just T-shirts or it's just that. That's an element of it. There's also an energy you have to create around a brand. You know, you made a really great point about your children. Just sitting here with you, when your team called me, one of the messages, one of the things when we were on the phone was, we love what you've done over the years of the human project. And I was like, oh, I mean, this is like one of those moments, like I really want to meet Joe, I want to do this whole thing, but I've only been doing this for 45 days. So what do I tell them, you know? And it's like... I've only been doing this for 45 days, and there was silence on the other end. I'm like, oh, crap, lost that opportunity, you know? And right. it was like, oh, in that case, you know, we really need to talk. Because there's an energy that you create in your brand when you're really in tune with it. And it just, it takes a lot of energy. I mean, it's not just going to Logo Works and grabbing a logo. I mean, it takes a lot of energy to really plan out all the different elements of what are you trying to create. Well, that's why, I, I don't know if you were up there before, but I said, um, if we believe that we got to get kids off the couch, right? And if we believe we're supposed to eat healthy and we're not supposed to drink and all that, why are we doing it here? Yeah, right? exactly. And I, I actually loved what, what you did the first night when we were here, right? Is we were like, okay, so we had this, we had some stuff here. We had some open bar. Yeah. And any of you that uh, didn't drink, you're on this side of the room. No burpees. Everyone who did, you know, you're doing yeah. 200. I think that's, there's a lot of power in that. And that's part so of the The brand. reason I'm afraid of that, that's me. That's my brand. Yeah. My, the reason I'm afraid of it is I'm fighting the whole f- world on that. Yeah. I'm fighting the whole world. Yeah. Everybody. Right. And it, it, with Steve Jobs and everybody else, it's the crazy ones that change the world, right? So, I mean, yeah. and I look at that, and you've got to have that energy. You've got to have that craziness about it because it is. It's a fight. And I'm the same way. It's like I'm saying things on stage. I'm saying things to these kids that is not politically correct. You know, I'm, I'm going in dangerous places because I'm being real with them. Yeah. I'm not saying anything inappropriate, but we're just being real. You know, we're just getting to the core because that's what they want to hear. They're tired of hearing the noise and the political this and that and somebody's agenda. They want real. And I think that that is, that is the key essence to any brand is the more real you are, the more it's either going to be found out and you're going to be a fraud or the more people are going to come in and be attracted to it. And then there becomes this internal battle where you're like, this is who I am, this is my brand, I'm fighting this, so i got to adapt to this. And I th- I've been around a lot of successful individuals like yourself, and I know, you know you've been around successful individuals. The one common thread is they don't, they don't, you know, what's the word I'm looking succumb. for? They don't succumb. They basically, at some point they did, and then they just said, you know, I'm done. Like, this is how I see it, this is what I want to do. I'm doing it. Like, I, I had a big fight. Um, my brother-in-law runs sponsorship for us. And um, he wants to make a commission. Um, and he's not unreasonable on anything he asks. And Speedstick approached him. And all I could remember was my mother saying, you can't use that underarm deodorant. It's got aluminum in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had a writer in the room as I said, no, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with all these big 
brands that want this or that. And um, I would take Tom's of Maine, who, by the way, I believe happens to be owned by the same company. Yeah. Right? Um, but that pissed everybody off that I said that, right? Because we have to exist in, in a business community. Yeah. And we've got big partners. And they're like, Joe, you can't say that. And I'm like, well, I know, but it's what I believe. Yeah. And so there's that fine line, right, where you don't piss everybody off. I saw, I saw when I said before, hey, let's not drink. I don't think everybody said yay. No, no, they didn't. There were a lot of nays. There in were there. a lot of nays. In I know. There. And and but if I had my way, we wouldn't drink. Yeah. When right. I think I think you bring up a good point, and for like young young entrepreneurs who are getting out there, there's a delicate balance. There is. You you yeah. have to you know be in the world and and respect some of the things, but also try to you know get as close to that line as you can and be strong yeah. but as you develop and you grow make it very vocal like i don't believe in this we're only doing this because of xyz okay. whatever and then when you get into a position where you are running your own event right it's like well this is my event and and it's not negative i'm not doing things illegal this is my beliefs this is where i'm going that's where i think you can make that stand yeah it's very for because it's like this is it um, regarding this project, I think we, 431 project we're talking about, I think we established ourselves hopefully at this event. So next time maybe we could be a little more firm yeah. on rules. Yeah, and I, and I think people respect that, right? I mean, yeah. we're, we're animals of structure. I mean, human beings, we say we hate structure. We love structure. We love structure, I mean, especially kids. Especially children. Yeah. Especially children. So. What's uh, which favorite exercise? <laughs> could be anything. Could be anything. My favorite exercise, which I don't know was considered next, was soccer. I mean, anything that had to do with soccer, running, and then, like, I don't know if you heard my story, but after I blew out my knees, I was a victim and didn't work out for 16 or 15 years till this weekend. Wow. So that was the first workout I did when I was up at 5.30 wow. in the morning with wow. you. So, like, that was... That's pretty big. Yeah, never done a burpee in my life. This then, morning or, or... No, the other yeah, morning. Oh, the other morning. Yeah, okay. So... This morning, we, I took them to a new level. I heard... I yeah, heard. I took them to a new level, so yeah. you, you might not have liked this morning as yeah, much. So <laughs> my body's still recovering, but, you know, we'll work That's it good. out. That's good. But it's, it, uh, I don't know, I, I mean, I just love to be active. I've always been active, but exercise per se, you know. Not your thing. It's not just force thing. yourself, 30 burpees a day. That's what I'm doing. I 30 burpees just, a day. Just talk to Ian, you know, one yep. of the guys up here. And, yep. and uh, I did Ian, 50. Ian Adamson? Ian Adamson, It's like yeah. the world's greatest <laughs> athlete ever. I know. And I did 50 burpees yesterday and didn't yeah. even realize it because yeah. we split them through the day. Yeah, yeah, I actually yeah. did more because you and I did 50 in the morning. So yeah. I did like 60 or 70 right through the day. Right. Nice. So that's just what I'm going to do now. We're, gonna, we're building our new human office and our new location. I wanted a warehouse originally just because I think it's cool. So yeah. now we're like, we're going to do a warehouse, standing desks, you know, throw a rope in the middle burpee of it. Burpee rooms. Burpee rooms and just freaking <laughs> like, as soon as people are like dragging, I'm like, let's do 10. Yeah. Like, let's go have yeah. fun. So, you, should, you could have it on a timer where it's random. Yeah, right? exactly. Just like random comes just, out. 10 burpees. It's right. Get an old fire alarm or something. Exactly. Just like, bell. Thanks for coming. Do appreciate that it. That was awesome. Thank you. All right, guys. I, I really like what Wes Chapman said. He, um, he, he, he's speaking to my heart. You know, I really think meeting kids where they're at and um, helping them out and really making a difference, being of service to this world is, is what it's all about. So I, I really I love that one. What else could you do on this planet, right? I mean, we got to take care of the next generation. Not everyone the thinks that way, though. The next seven generations, actually. <laughs> next seven generations. But, you know, not everyone thinks that way, and that's why guys like this are important to really keep that in our consciousness. Uh, unfortunately, even parents don't think that way all the time, or uh, donors. Uh, you know, the children, the children don't have parents. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or they don't have that figure in their lives, you know. And, and here's a guy coming in. And, and trying to work hard for those guys. You're right. So it's, it's the higher calling once again. And uh, the next generation is what it's all about. I heard, uh, not to get off track here, but uh, the next generation is supposed to live five years less than the current generation. Pretty um, powerful uh, statistic. We, we better get unless them started. They, um, unless they get rewilded. Ah, that's true, wrong. actually. That's a huge point. <laughs> what, I mean, I am curious. Just soft, softer, softer lives, um, video games, worse diets, nutrition, et cetera, yeah. soda. But with, with what I love, soda. <laughs> I heard it. You know, you can make healthy soda. Like you can make your own ginger beer, birch but, beer, so not beer. Let's beer, get back to Wes. Soda. Yeah. So, so again, another thing with Wes that I thought was really cool is he talked about kind of two levels of service. And you know, a lot of us think that if we just go and start um, uh, doing things for people, we deserve huge applause because you know we're helping that lady with her groceries. We're uh, we're giving that homeless guy a sandwich. And his point was that first of all. If we're doing something and serving other people, it shouldn't be for the reward. It's because it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And he also talked about that next level. You know, that's just the stuff we should just do. Holding a door for someone is just being a good human. Yep. And he really took it to another level about how can you go and make a, an impactful difference. And I love when he said, 
Um, you got to be crazy about change in the world. You got to get really excited about that. So how, how, do, how do we get people excited about that? Yeah, Joe, you're excited about change in the world right now. You found a, an avenue. Yeah, I, I'm excited about change in the world just because um, I love. I get motivated by it, mm -hmm. right? And so um, maybe it's a little selfish on my part, and maybe it's selfish on Wes's part or anybody that's doing something for the greater good. But uh, it motivates me to get up every day. It motivates me to work hard, and um, and so I'm getting something back from that, right? Sure. They say when you give somebody something, yeah. um, if they wired your brain, you'd act. It's, it's actually like finishing a race. You'd get some of that well, good stuff i always with my family christmas you know we're always kind of like who won christmas but it sounds not what you did you give what did you give right you know what, what did you do and and it's just think about that what do you get more joy when somebody gives you something or when you give it when you give things away and you yeah, see that you've you've given the, the perfect gift or the right thing or you've helped somebody in the right way that 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 does make you feel good. There's an argument yeah. that there's no such thing as true altruism because altruism is doing it for someone else. Right. But in fact, the people who are really doing the most for other people, it's because it makes them feel really good as well. So it's not taking anything away from it. No. And, and in fact, you know, when you talk about selfishness, um, there's a term divine selfishness that to do things that are truly transformational, you have to be someone who's doing it because you love it or else you just can't put the passion into it. it. So I'll, um, I'll tell you, we, uh, my son and I, uh, Charlie, uh, eight years old was running the New York Marathon with me and um, we're at mile 23 and he's broken and I'm saying you want to pack it in and he doesn't want to pack it in he wants to keep going and a woman is handing out candies mm -hmm. and he takes three candies and I'm, I was going to stop him but I said ah, I let him have the candy we're 23 miles in here and <laughs> it could melt, uh, melt and turn into chocolate milk and it'd be perfect <laughs> it'd be perfect and um and he doesn't eat them. We're 100 more steps, and he's upset, but he wants to get to the finish line. And I said, what are you doing with the candy? He said, I want to bring it home for my sister and uh, my brother and, and, my, and the young baby. And um, he, I thought for a second, this kid's unbelievable, but intrinsically there's probably something that was happening that was, that was helping fuel him to do the last three miles, right? So we must be all wired to, to do that and, and get that response. I think, I think we all have it in us. Some people, it's buried because they haven't been taught by by experience by uh example about how good it makes us feel to, to to be of service so so charlie's seen it he's seen that by helping other people it makes you feel better so he wants to go and do something nice for for his siblings um but in this interview he talks also about um how important it is to be that example to lead by example and you know a lot of these kids that he's talking about and the, the tough situations they're from a huge part of what he's doing is not just providing for them; it's actually providing a model for them of Role how to modeling. go out and be yep, in the world. Exactly. And uh, and I, I'd say, you know, uh, I'm going to pat you on the back and say some of that with your son was because you've modeled what it is to, to help people too. I would right? say it's more my wife. Yeah. Okay. I'll, and I'll wonderful. give you that. I'll She's give you wonderful. that. Wonderful. But I think I think that's the important thing when you're dealing with what if it's troubled youth or people that feel like they don't have any resource, they don't have anything available to them. What you do is you do that paradigm shift. You say, okay, you might not have. Like, like what you think are material goods or a good or come from a family that's supportive of you but you can still can give of your time and of your service and when you do that it's a really empowering thing and they're saying okay i still do have worth i still do I'm have sure. something to give and i like the motto you know you got to give to live and live to give you know i think and i think i think just role modeling to to people to to walk you walk your talk and not just talk about it, talk about it, as my friend Cameron and, says. And with that said, we can give you more at SpartanUpPodcast.com where you'll learn more about Dr. Johnny Waite, Sephra, our wild woman, and Colonel Nye, who's got an interactive corner on the site that um, you can interact with. See you cool. soon.